Hey everyone, David here with your weekly mouthful of David video. Before that though, I'll get into my usual updates. So we now have five episodes out, our latest one being about the movie Dunkirk. And so our next episode is actually going to be about the movie Lincoln. Uh, our next episode was going to be about the Battle of Dien Bien Phu, but uh, we had a, just a very, very slight delay with that. We're actually still going to be recording that uh, the Saturday after this Saturday. But um, this upcoming Saturday, we'll be recording just a you know quick, easy, fun one about Lincoln. And so be on the lookout for that. And then after that, the uh, episode about the Battle of Dien Bien Phu. Those will be coming out in the next couple weeks. So uh, hope you like those. Anyways, for today's video, I actually uh, did work today um, putting up crown molding, which is very tiring when you're not used to uh, doing physical labor, but it was it was good. I enjoyed it. But uh, anyway, because of that, I just threw together a, uh, a quick video. Just thought I'd explore this quote from James Baldwin, uh, my favorite writer of all time, and uh, I, I think he brings up a really interesting idea here. So the quote is, people are trapped in history, and history is trapped in them. And this quote kind of sounds almost pessimistic at first, but I don't think it is. And I'll get into why by just sort of uh, explaining what the quote means to me. So to start with the first half, people are trapped in history. The way I look at it, you know, people are a result of the historical forces that that brought not just them, but everything in our world to this point. And so, for example, like talking about my own life, right? My parents met in California. How did they even get there? My dad actually grew up impoverished in the South, and so he joined the military. Uh, he was in the Navy, and so, you know, one feature of being in the military is you move around a lot. And so he met my mom when he was stationed in, in San Diego. Uh, my mom got to California because her family left the poverty of Tijuana and moved up to Los Angeles. And so that's how she ended up in California. And the so, so just as a result of the historical forces of, you know, people joining the military for socioeconomic upward mobility and... Uh, people, you know, immigrating to places like California are, are already these historical forces that are leading just to my, my very birth. Before I'm even being affected by historical forces, uh, as a living person, my, my very uh, conception is brought about by historical forces. And that's true for all of us, even if the historical forces aren't quite as grand as, as immigration or, or upward mobility, right? Uh Actually growing up, you know, I grew up in a lot of places and I think that really helped inform my perspective on things uh, because, you know, I, I grew up in, in a variety of like different, you know, what we would call like socioeconomic positions and also just like different types of neighborhoods. And so that seeing all those different things really affected me. But the main place that I grew up, Vista, California, is a predominantly working class Latino Latina neighborhood. And um, I couldn't really have grown up there like a super long time ago because, you know, Vista as a city isn't that old. Uh, and it's only actually been in the last 50 or so years that that area has even had like a significant population really in any way whatsoever, right? And so the, and in large part because of large amounts of immigrants going there to, to populate it. And as a result of that, a lot of the people I grew up around were the descendants of people who immigrated here, you know, very recently. And so that helped uh, shape my perspective, you know, seeing the experiences of those around me kind of informed my view of the world in, in a much different way than if I grew up in like Malibu or, or Santa Monica or something like that. Uh, you know, another example, as I was growing up, father in and out of the prison system prison system and how we deal with like social problems generally in society, uh, other things that are a result of historical forces, right? Um, I, I went to uh, a couple universities, you know, I got my undergraduate degree at UC Irvine, got my graduate degree at SESU, and, and the, the formation of higher education in the first place is its own set of historical forces, and then the establishment of the UCs and CSUs uh, themselves also have their own specific history behind them. And 
this is this is just like the tip of the iceberg, right? Like there's a million other ways I could talk about how, you know, just the very basics of who I am, what I've been through, uh, decisions I've made are connected to things, ideas, places uh, with their own history. And at first glance, that sounds a little bit limiting, right? But then that is where the second half of the quote comes in. And so people are trapped in history, but history is trapped in them. And so the way I look at it is the relationship is reciprocal. So I'm influenced by history, but I'm also still a person. And you listening and watching this are also a person, you know, everyone in your life is a person who has agency, you know, the ability to make their own decisions. And so even though history is trapped, or or even though uh, we are trapped in history, history is trapped in us. We're all in this together. It's a, it's a mutual thing. And really what that means is what we collectively do collectively in the sense, you know, all of us added up together, what we do will affect the future. And a really, you know, super obvious example of that is uh, if every single person tomorrow in society decided that they wanted to embrace Black Lives Matter and the movement for Black Lives, and they looked at some of the most popular demands for, uh, or, you know, from the movement that a lot of people from the movement are talking about, uh, say, like, you know, radically defunding the police. If everyone embraced that, then obviously that would be past tomorrow, right? Now, obviously, nothing is uh, ever 100% unanimous among humanity. Uh, we're just all too diverse in, in uh, experiences and living conditions and just a, a number of other factors, you know, historical, historical uh, influences like we were just talking about. But uh, a lot of what happens in history is a sort of, uh, you know, added some total of the different decisions and actions of different people every day. And so this is why I don't think the quote should be thought of necessarily as as limiting or pessimistic because it's a two-way street. And so history influences us, but we also influence history. So I hope you liked that video, everyone. Uh, I'll be back with a sort of more heavily... uh, researched and thought out one next week, but just wanted to do a a kind of casual one today. Uh, Hope you're staying safe out there. You know, uh, if you're still engaged in organizing for, you know, the movement for Black Lives, you know, I hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying safe. Uh, I went to a protest on Friday. I saw someone dressed up as uh, Master Chief from the Halo series, which was pretty cool. But uh, it's, it's very good to see that people are exercising their collective ability to to influence things. So have a good week and catch you next time.